In a different tutorial, I show you in detail how to create shapes. So, in this video, I'll go faster through the shape making process so we can get to the fun part of animating our shapes. Let's start by making a rectangle. Hold down on the shape tool to select the rectangle shape if it's not already selected. Click and drag to draw the rectangle. Something I like to do right away is to rename my layers as I go. I'll rename this rectangle. Our shape layer has two sublayers. For the moment, ignore the content sublayer and open the transform sublayer. Let's do a simple position animation first. Remember to place your time indicator where you want your first keyframe. Click on the stopwatch to activate that animation property. Move your playhead somewhere further down the timeline. Then move the rectangle inside the composition. We can scrub or play to make sure it worked correctly. Move the playhead back to zero seconds and let's activate the scale animation property next. I am going to place my second keyframe lined up with the position keyframe and then scale down the size. Let's play that. The spacebar is a handy shortcut for play and stop. Take a moment to look at the properties panel. We can see my rectangle colors, size parameters, and so forth. If you want to remove the stroke, you can do that up here by clicking the word stroke and then selecting none. You may notice I often click outside of my composition so that I get a clean view without bounding boxes. I am going to undo that with Command Z because I want to keep my stroke. Let's make another shape using the ellipse tool, holding down on the shape tool to find it. As I click and drag, I can press down my shift key to make a perfect circle. I want a stroke on this so I can get that by selecting solid color, clicking on this handy eyedropper, and then selecting a color from my composition. I'll move my new circle to the bottom left and scoot my playhead back to zero. Let's rename this layer circle and open my transform properties. I'll activate my position property, move my playhead and move my circle over here, which creates that second keyframe automatically. Note that I have sped up part of the screen tutorial in case you've noticed that my animation is moving faster than the timeline suggests. Now I'll activate my scale animation and make my circle bigger. You can always move your keyframes after the fact. Here I am deciding I want these keyframes lined up. Holding down the shift key lets us snap keyframes and the playhead to the nearest keyframe, which is very helpful. Now I'll add two more keyframes, one for position and one for scale, like so. Then I'll move the playhead forward just a bit and activate the opacity animation to make the circle look like it's fading out and back in. Let's play that. It's super easy to adjust keyframe location on the timelines. Simply select the keyframe and drag it. You can select multiple keyframes to move also. I do this a lot to experiment with the speed of animation changes. We can also easily trim each layer timeline by hovering over the beginning or end until you see that double arrow and then click and drag. I'm doing this with my circle timeline so that the circle doesn't appear right away. Let's make a star shape next. I'll rename my new layer star. Now I want us to take a look at the contents sublayer. All shapes come with the contents sublayer, which offers a bunch more animation choices. Open up Polystar 1 and Polystar Path 1. I know, it's a lot to look at when you're new to these. Take note of the points line. I can change my points from 5 to 3 to make a triangle. I'll undo that because I want a star. Let's experiment with how our star changes when we change these bottom four properties. Let's trim our star layer so that it does not appear until almost three seconds in. Now notice how all of those shape properties have those little stopwatch icons. That's because we can animate those. 
So let's do that with our outer roundness. I'll activate this animation to insert my first keyframe and then move my playhead forward and then scrub over the numbers here to watch my star change into a flower shape. So remember, using the outer roundness feature for the star shape is an easy way to make flower shapes. So to recap, I just demonstrated how to make a flower and how to animate a star into a flower. Let's close up the contents layer and open up the transform layer. I'll rotate the flower by activating the rotation property. I'll move my playhead forward and scrub 40 degrees to the right for just a slight rotation. This is a great time to talk about anchor points because rotation animations demonstrate this best. The anchor point is a specific point on a layer that serves as the location from which transformations occur. It is represented by this small crosshair icon. Let's dig into that. To move your anchor point, use this anchor point tool. Then you can click on the anchor and move it wherever you want. Now, when I scrub that part of my timeline, I can see that my flower is rotating around the new anchor position. Let's close our star layer and select the rectangle on the composition. That also selects it in our layers panel. Now I'll draw another rectangle. Notice that our second rectangle is inside of our existing rectangle layer now. If nothing had been selected, the new shape would come in on a new separate layer. Why does this matter? Because these two shapes are under the same layer, they will both exhibit the same transform properties because there is only one set of those for one layer. That said, each shape layer, in this case my two rectangles, each have their own set of transform properties. Let's experiment with activating the rectangle to position animation, like so. Now notice how that rectangle moves in an extra way. Open up Fill 1 and activate Color. This will animate a color change. I'll move my playhead forward. Now let's change the color. This eyedropper allows you to select any color on the composition, but I want to get a new color, so I'll click on the square. I'll select a blue and then click OK. Now watch how the rectangle changes from red to blue. Halfway through that change, it's purple because color theory tells us that red and blue together make purple. I think that's plenty of new shape animation for this basic beginner video. That said, you may be ready to intuitively figure out a bunch of the other animation properties now under the contents sub layer. Have fun experimenting.